right, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, thanks for coming in. My name is Eric Graham, the technology director for the district. Uh, I've been joined by several members of the high school staff as well, and they're going to be coming out here in just a little bit to answer some questions for you and give you some demonstrations and provide some more information uh, about our upcoming one-to-one -one program. So quick question, how many of you are current eighth grade parents right now just coming into the high school? Okay, and everybody else is current high school parents, I'm assuming? All right, good. So I'm gonna try to zip through this as fast as I can. I'm gonna talk really fast and present a lot of information, uh, mainly because we know some of you have a concert to get to tonight at seven o'clock. So our goal is to be done in 30 minutes. And after 30 minutes, we'll open up for questions. I'll stay here as late as you need tonight to answer all of your questions, okay? So, um, and don't bother, or you're not gonna bother us at all if at any point you need to get up and go to that concert or you're finding all your questions are answered, just get up and go right in the middle, not gonna bother us at all, okay? So, start talking a little bit about this upcoming one-to-one -one program that we have. So why are we doing this? Well, a couple of reasons. First of all, it's to address the needs of the 21st century skills and 21st century learners. And a lot of it has to do with engagement. Our kids are what we call digital natives. They've grown up with this all of their lives. We didn't. So as parents, we didn't have that. You know, When we were younger, we still lived in a world that was analog. We didn't have all these devices around and everything. And so our learning landscape was very different than what theirs is. And so we need to engage these digital natives in their learning every day. But part of the problem is that the classroom has remained fairly stagnant. If we look at pictures of a classroom, and I pulled this out because some people have already seen the middle school presentation, but if you look at a classroom from the 1950s and you look at one from about three years ago, they're nearly identical. It's desks and paper and pencil. And the problem is society has changed around us, but the educational world really hasn't caught up. And we need to start taking those steps to move forward towards that. Some other reasons that are up here, um, while not law yet, and we don't know what's going to happen with it, there is a very definite push from the federal level, and they have been making statements that they want to do away with paper textbooks come 2017. That by 2017, we will no longer sell paper textbooks to students in this country anywhere. Now again, is that going to happen? I don't know. Come back and talk to me in 2017, and we'll see what happens. But that is the, the push from the uh, Federal Department of Education. There's a link, and I'll show you where this is on our website later. Uh, it's up there. I encourage you, if you still have questions at the end and you're wondering, you know, as a country, where are we going? And again, why are we doing this? Um, there's a great link to something called the Digital Playbook. And this is put out, again, by the Federal Department of uh, Education. It's a uh, great read. It's a little long. A lot of it is addressed straight to educators, but there's a parent section right in the middle, and again, I'll show you where that link is right on our website so you don't have to write down a really long web address and just click on it, and it'll take you right there. But it might be worth giving a few minutes to, to give that a quick read. So a little bit about some numbers here. Um, you know, why do the computer labs not address our learning needs anymore? And why, why are we going mobile with everything? Well, this is just raw data. Raw data of what, you know, basically our country is doing and our world is doing right now. And you see what's happening with laptops and desktop computers that have been around for a while. You watch the numbers <coughs> going down. Obviously, 2017, that's a projection. 2014 is even a projection. 2013 numbers are actual. So this is put out by the Gartner Group. And they've really, really been on the money for about the last 10 years predicting where technology is going. And you see these highlighted in yellow where the ultra mobile and tablets are going and you just see their numbers climbing. So that's a reflection on our society and what's going on in the business world as well. So a little bit of history of one-to-one -one programs. Uh, when we started this last year at the middle school, a lot of parents came in concerned and saying, this is so new and where did you get this? And you know, really scared and really nervous. That's okay, we understand that. We're a little scared and a little nervous too. Um, in all actuality, one to ones have been around for quite a while. They started in the late 90s. They were using traditional laptops, you know, okay, we got finally this device that can be carried in a book bag or a backpack if we need to kind of thing. And that's where they really started. Uh, I actually had the privilege of working in one when I first started my teaching career. It was a wonderful experience. The problem was it was incredibly expensive. 
And unless you could get out, go out and find some corporation to basically back your program, it wasn't going to happen. I was about $1,600 a student just to make that happen, and we still didn't have the wireless internet that we do today. Now we've got good high-speed wireless in place, and this number has dropped down to about $475 per student. And now it becomes you know, within the realm of reality to, uh, to afford something like this. So research, we went out and visited a lot of districts. Um, myself, the principals have gone out, various other members of the administration. We've taken teachers with us to districts that we thought really had a lot to offer. And so there's a list of just a few of them up there. We really like to thank Milton Middle School and Edgerton High School. Um, we have looked at their programs a lot because they are ahead of the game. They are ahead of us on this. They kind of blazed the trail, and they were very willing to share information. And really, the best things they shared with us were laundry lists of things not to do. You know, they literally had lists we could see from year one to year two. They're now in either sometimes year three and even year four of their programs. Um, and the best thing they had was the list from the first year. Big, bold, highlight statement saying, don't ever do this again, because it was a nightmare and a disaster. And that has helped us to avoid some of the pitfalls. So we definitely have to thank uh, those people for sharing everything with us. So those school districts, like you said, have been doing this for more than one year. Oh, yeah. Three, four, five years. Yeah, so if we go back to that real quick and we look at this, um, Milton's really the, uh, the standard. In our state, they have basically documented everything. They've been doing it for multiple years. They're in year four right now. Um, another one, Pewaukee, has been years into this. They started with laptops, then they went to netbooks. Maybe we can remember that for a little while. Those are kind of the end thing. Now they're into iPads. They're doing a dual iPad and Chromebook program and everything. Uh, they're huge into it. They've been doing this for a long, long time. Burlington's years ahead. So yeah, we're trying to learn from these guys. Um, and they have some definite big no-nos on their list, and so we're, we're trying to stay away from some of that kind of stuff. So the equipment that we're using here, um, Whitnell is long invested in the Apple ecosystem, and there's just a tremendous, if you ever go to the App Store, if you have an iPad, hundreds of thousands of different apps that you can get, there's materials out there. The iTunes U system is paramount. Uh, any students you're sending off to college, I guarantee you they're going to touch iTunes U because every major university I know of is using it. Uh, it's becoming a massive repository of information at the collegiate level, but even coming down into high school. And so that's all available through these devices. Uh, high school students will be getting the iPad mini with retina display. The model's up there, uh, defender case. You want to see some of that stuff when you leave tonight. It's all sitting there on the table for you to touch, feel, use, whatever you want to do. Um, gives you an example of what the students will get. So training for the staff. Um, training's actually been going on for a while. We've held a number of in-services already, some after-school sessions that staff can come to. The biggest one, though, is that all high school teachers have been invited to a four-day academy. It's going to be at the end of July. Very intense four days. They come here. We provide some of the trainers from our own staff. We also bring off-site or private trainers that come in for specific applications to teach. And so it's four very, very intense days for them to come in and get trained, get prepped. Also gives them some common time where they can get together in their departments and start planning some of that curriculum. So they're starting to think about lesson plans and what's gonna be my first couple lesson plans that are gonna involve the iPads and they can share ideas, that kind of thing. They also have an available instructional technology leader. You'll hear from her in just a few minutes. For the students, they're going to come in during rollout days, and we'll get to those in just a little bit. And during the rollout days, they'll actually get their equipment, check it out, and then they will do a count setup on that day. Training for them will happen during the first week to two weeks of the school year, where they're going to do a rotation of stations. So one is digital citizenship, you know, email etiquette, internet safety, social media safety, that kind of stuff. Um, the actual use of the iPads, some basic troubleshooting, uh, keep it clean all that kind of stuff. So that'll be the rotation <coughs> that all the high school students will go through. Management. Um, for those coming up from eighth grade into the high school, we are changing management systems this year. It's not going to be the same as what we use this year. For those who've been talking with middle school parents, um, we've got a new system going in place that is different from what we have currently this year. It gives us a little bit more control over those iPads if needed. 
So when we looked at this a year and a half ago for the middle school program, we only had two options. The technology only provided two options. Option one is super restrictive. The students can't do anything with it. They can't download anything. And when the teachers looked at this, they said, well, you gotta be crazy. What happens when we want to add content? What happens when we need a new app for one of our academic subjects? Now you can't get it. We literally would have to physically collect back all the iPads, hook them up, physically into a cart to get anything added to them. That's unrealistic. The only other option was down here. We could give a content restriction to the students, and this is what's going on at the middle school right now. So they have a 13 and under rating at the middle school. So they can't download anything that's rated higher than that. But beyond that, we don't really have any control. They can download anything else that they want. They can download music. They can do chatting on there. They can do video chat. We can't restrict that on a network scale. We can grab the individual iPad and do it, but again, we only do that for the handful of kids that have really abused the program. Some changes have happened in the last year. There is now a new in-between option that we're gonna be moving to. This gives us the ability to, number one, deploy out new apps like paid apps that the district is buying, or if we would purchase a digital textbook for the kids, we can send that to them remotely over the air from a server. So if we have a new, you know, let's say geography textbook that we think is great, we buy it as a district, we need 120 copies, we can now deploy those 120 copies to the kids that need it. We couldn't do that before. Same thing with paid apps. If we want to place restrictions on them, we want to say no video chat, that's something that the teachers are determined, we don't need, it's not an educational need, we can block that. Now understand that still doesn't leave the students off the hook. They still need to be responsible users. Once the app store is open, we can place a content restriction, which we will do, but anything accepted within that content restriction, games, whatever, they can still download that stuff. So that isn't going to go away. We still need to teach our students that as parents who still have to, you know, kind of keep a little eye and all that changes to get to high school, and at your individual family, you will need to determine who is responsible for keeping an eye on that device. Student rollout, technically scheduled for August 12th, 13th, and 14th. This is gonna coincide with the ID and picture days, where students have to come in, get their IDs made up, that kind of stuff, um, and we're gonna do rollout at that same time. At that time, they would receive their equipment, they'll come in, um, they'll have their sign-off sheets ready to go where you're gonna sign as a parent or family, they'll sign off, they'll bring that in, here's my paperwork, They'll get their equipment checked out to them. We'll make sure that their educational iTunes account is set up at that time, that their email is functioning at that time, uh, and so that they're set up and, and ready to go at that point with the hardware. Then once they come in and they start school, that's when we'll start going through the training pieces. Uh, more detailed procedures will follow later this summer, and we'll talk about where you're gonna get more information in just a little bit. Funding hasn't changed from this previous year. The regular district budget is going to cover the primary funding for this and the initial purchase of all the equipment that's needed. Now, repairs and replacement are the responsibility of the family. And in your packet there is a chart. So let's say your son or daughter somehow cracks the screen on the iPad. It needs to be repaired. We take care of all those repairs. You get an educational discount on it. Um, you would turn that in here at the high school and we'll send that in and get that repaired. We make no money on those repairs. We're literally just passing the cost off to you. It's the same as a textbook. So if your son or daughter had a textbook, they left it outside, it got rained on and destroyed, you have to replace it, you get charged for that. Same thing happens here. Now there is a little note at the top there. These prices aren't quite finalized. We work with three contractors to do this. I'm waiting for prices from one of them yet because we make them guarantee prices from July to July so they don't change. And I'm still waiting. So there's just a little note on top there that says these will be finalized in early August uh, and then you'll get a new version of this. Um, I don't expect they're really gonna change much. Um, but, you know, hopefully that's fairly really accurate what you have in your hands right there. Okay, so we wanna show you a couple of classroom examples and talk about how this is used on a daily basis. Uh, remember, we're a year into this with the middle school, so some of those learning systems that apply to the high school are gonna come forward. So there's a few people here to talk to you. We have Ms. Kaiser, she's the ITL, or Instructional Technology Leader for the high school, Ms. Serletti, and Ms. Hernandez, 
and they're both going to talk to you a little bit about that stuff. So, you got your stuff up there and ready to go? Yep. Okay. Okay, so I'll start with a few of the logistics, some of the things that we're adding this year. Um, I've worked a lot with the middle school this year as well. So one of the features that we've incorporated in the middle school is Google Calendar. Since we have recently gone Google, you can say, um, all of our <coughs> students have a Gmail account. So um, we are going to make sure that all teachers have a Google Calendar. So currently, when a student starts at the beginning of the year, they sign up to get every teacher's calendar of, you know, throughout their day, throughout their schedule. They will um, sign up to see their calendar. So on that child's calendar, you can see here, this is an example of a student calendar. These are all of the teachers that the student sees throughout the day. And so it is the expectation of the teacher that by Monday morning, they have the week planned out. So this child can actually see, okay, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, here's what we're going to be doing in class, here's what's for homework. Now, as a teacher myself, I know that some things kind of change. Maybe I planned that on Wednesday this was going to be homework. So the teacher does have the flexibility to go in on Wednesday morning and change things, but it's nice that every child can then see what kind of the, what is the plan for the week and what is homework. Um, so this took place of the actual assignment notebooks that they had at the middle school, and that is the plan for the high school as well. That doesn't mean that your child might not want to still write things down in their own assignment notebook, but it's just nice for them to have a place to go. Um, all parents can also subscribe to teachers' calendars as well. So if you find that maybe your child really struggles in math and isn't turning in their math homework, maybe you want to go to that teacher's website and subscribe to their calendar so you can always see what the homework is for math on a daily basis. Um, just by clicking on the actual line, you can get a detailed look at what exactly the homework is. So this is something we've been doing at the middle school. It's worked really well. Um, it's kind of helped keep kids organized and it's worked well so we're going to continue that up at the high school. So that's one addition this year. The next addition is eBackpack. eBackpack was a, prescrip a, prescrip <laughs> a subscription that we um, have bought into and this is a way to kind of help us reduce the amount of paper that we're using since all of our students have an iPad. Um, this is a place where it automatically syncs with Infinite Campus. So once again, this is a look at one student's e-backpack. This is all of the classes that the child sees throughout the day. So the teacher has the ability to push out assignments this way. The teacher also, or then the students have the ability to write on the assignments through e-backpack and turn it back in. Okay. This is not a tool that every teacher has to use. This is not an expectation that every assignment is going to be given out in the e-backpack and has to be turned back in. This is one of those things that it's going to make it easier for students to store things in their iPad. It's, if you think of it as if you're familiar with Dropbox, if you can think of it as a kind of a Dropbox that the teachers and the students share, or perhaps a flash drive instead of them carrying around a flash drive, this is like an online flash drive that the teachers and students are going to share together. Um, for example, I know the Spanish teacher at the middle school, there's lots of handouts with vocabulary, you know, constant vocabulary list, this word and this word. So instead of making 400 copies and then the students lose them and then she has to make more of them, this is, it's always going to be an e-backpack and it's just, it's just a nice place to save things, okay? So this, once again, this is not an expectation of our teachers to use. This is going to be there. I'm sure that they will all use it to some extent. Google Calendar, that first I showed you, that is going to be the expectation that every teacher is using Google Calendar. So if you are looking for, you know, what your child is working on, Google Calendar is going to be the place to go. Um, one thing that I have learned, I've worked a lot in the middle school classrooms, and I just wanted to mention, one thing that I've seen a lot of is, with the one-to-one -one initiative, a lot of people think that it's more about just creating content and, you know, it's just another pla a place to write a paper or a place to make a project instead of paper and glue. Um, and I really think that this year, being in the one-to-one -one classroom at the middle school, that is probably at the bottom of my list of positives about the one-to-one -one program. We can make a lot of really cool presentations. I'll tell you, the kids still make really cool paper and pencil presentations too. They still use poster board. They still do a lot of things like that. But it's more about putting the knowledge in their hands and that inquiry-based approach, where the kids can actually find the information on their own. 
and you know, I worked a lot with at the high school with Mr. Levy as well, but you know, when you're starting a unit on the Middle East, instead of spewing the information or giving it to them, say, hey, use five minutes, go to Google Earth, go to you know, World Factbook and tell me three things about you know, this country and let them find that, in, in, you know, that information instead of just giving it to them. So I really feel like that was important to say just because this isn't just an expensive notebook that we're giving our kids, it really is more about giving them the tools to find the information on their own and kind of we're guiding them. With that said, Mr. Letty has used um, the iPads a lot this year, although we don't have one-on-one -on -one at the high school, we do have iPad carts in each department. So we've spent a lot of time this year doing different projects and kind of, um, you know, she has mostly seniors, so working with those seniors, trying to see how, how we can incorporate the iPad with the older kids as well. So the first example, you want to talk about Google presentations. Well, first I want to say that <laughs> all of my kids went through the Whitnell School District, so my youngest is 20 years old, my oldest is 25, and I have three, so there's one in between. And uh, when I found out that the middle school was rolling out the one-to-one, I went to that training last year because when my kids were coming home and telling me what they were doing in college, I felt there was a need to, to make this transition. So um, one of the things that I use a lot is the Google presentations because um, the kids, I found, didn't all have PowerPoint <coughs> at home, so this was a way everybody <coughs> had access to a tool where they could make presentations, but the really neat thing was I could block out a time at night, say 7 8 o'clock at night, and I could say I'm going to be online at that time, and I could look at what was going on, and I could make comments, and the kids could see it. At first, it freaked all of us out, because they were like, oh my God, my teacher's in my house, <laughs> you know, but, um, and I thought it was kind of weird, too, if I was on and they were on, and sometimes, it would actually, it got to be a really uh, comfortable situation, and sometimes the kids were like, where were you? I was on, I go, you guys, I do go to bed, like, at 10 o'clock at night, because sometimes they're on at midnight, you know, and they're like, where were you? So, um, it's been, it's been, like, really helpful, and so the fact that they could be working on a lab report, this happens to be a summary presentation that a group did, but they could be working on a lab report, and before they come in for a final assessment, we've had a chance to talk about it, in a sense. And so the, the whole learning piece Ms. Kaiser is talking about uh, improves in that way. So, you want to go to the mm -hmm. next one? I don't know what's next. Is it Educreations? Yes. Okay, so then, last year, um, I asked the juniors that were um, left behind after the seniors graduated if they wanted to, um, you know, help me plan how we would use the iPads a little bit. And so they were looking for apps. And one of them they came up with was EduCreations, which is really a whiteboard on the iPads. So we um, dissected deer hearts. Uh, kids bring them in from various sources. And uh, we get about 60 deer hearts a year in, and so the kids are doing a dissection. But instead of just doing the dissection and then we're done and having to throw it out, they were able to use the iPads or their phones to take pictures along the way. And then I could gather feedback as to how much they knew because they could voice record over. So you can hear a little bit of this. It's a blood vessel, specifically a vein, and is located on the superior right side of the heart. It's a short blood vessel and there are no valves between it and the right atrium. It brings deoxygenated blood from the body into the heart. This is the pulmonary valve. It's a semi-lunar valve, which means the valve looks like a partial moon rather than a leaflet valve, which has flat flaps. Yeah, so I'm really, it's a real good assessment tool for me compared to just them turning in a written lab where labeling a picture that didn't even look like the thing we dissected. You know, it's in color, and, and the, I'm very excited that now they'll have their own iPad because what I would do is I would post the best of or the exemplars for kids to study off of, but now they're taking everything home with them. They have their own, so that's great. And because my computer is asleep over there, we don't have the book creator example. Are you gonna do labeling? Oh, yes. Sorry. Yeah. So then, because I'm teaching anatomy and physiology,
biology too. Another thing I used to have to do is the first chapter is body regions. So the kids were tracing themselves on paper, which was costing me a fortune because, you know, they have six, eight boys in the class. And they were, you know, labeling everything. And, you know, it was kind of funny because they'd hang it up in their bedroom and their body would be hanging in their bedroom. And, you know, parents would say it was still there even after they had gone off to college and stuff. But um, they really had to quiz themselves. With this app, which is free, um, this is Taylor Clarizio. She actually just has her partner take a picture of herself and she's put pins into the different locations and she goes through and labels it, which is learning enough, right? That's what we would have done. But the great part is what Ms. Kaiser's showing you, which I don't know if she can pick up. I have right. no idea what the tarsal is. Okay, she's, she's gone to <laughs> up there. Oh, sorry. She's gone to um, the little cap, the graduation cap. Is that like, it turns it into quizzes. So now if she quick clicks, oh, did you go there? Different. So she can pick location quiz. The kids can quiz themselves that way or a multiple choice quiz, however they want to do it. Okay, so, so now she can like go through and see what she really knows. And I can't, like the kids just aced this part of the test this time because they had this. And I, um, they can, t you know, like they have this for college. Most of my students will go on and take anatomy and physiology in college. So, which is like we've been, we've been putting out 100 kids a year through this class. Um, so it's just, I think it's just really a phenomenal thing. So those are my little, you can see I'm elderly, you know, so <laughs> if I can do this, you know, I feel like uh, most of the staff can handle the change in technology. I think it's, it's really been fun. And we've had a lot of feedback from the kids, so we're, we're listening. You know, I think that's the big thing is we have to listen to what's working, what's not working, and um, get their feedback and keep improving.
to the next group of intro and advanced ceramic students. And then at the end of the semester, they'll add to it. And so it should become more fleshed out and a better resource as it goes on. Um, and there were a few students who really came up with interesting things throughout the semester, things that I didn't know you could do. One student figured out we could put underglaze in an antique inkwell pen. And I don't think that's ever been done. I've never seen that. So that was her chapter in this book. And that's a resource now that's available to all the other students that we wouldn't have been able to find somewhere else. And they can see her describing it. So it's coming from her. She's talking about how she came up with this technique and the best way to do it and all of those experiences. Okay. So just to finish up real quick, uh, you know, what's going to happen now the rest of summer? Where can you get more information? That type of stuff. So you'll be looking for a couple of things. Uh, first of all, an update to the handout that you have will come out to you via email with some more information early August. You know, so prior, you know, a week to two weeks prior um, to the time when students will actually be getting their equipment, that kind of stuff, we'll update everything. Uh, they will have to sign off. And the forms are in there already, and those are finalized, but we'll send new copies along the email too, which is the acceptable use policies, which again, we're not going to sit here and go through all the legalese, but they're in there. If you want to read them, the sign-off sheet is in there. And that's what we'll be asking students to bring in uh, when they come to get their equipment. So that mass message will be coming out early August. And then as we have more information and as we get the equipment in, and as things you know, may update more, the single place to really go is our website. And you can go either to the district site or the high school site. It doesn't matter. But when you're on either one of them, go under parents. Scroll up here a little bit so you can see it under parents, and there's the one-to-one -one iPad program. And that'll take you actually to the pages that I'm on. There's lots of information, there's a section just for high school. <coughs> uh, same thing for students. If students go under their menu here, you'll see the same thing. It all leads to this place, and then from here, you can come in here under high school, and essentially the information that's in here is what you have in your packet. This is also where the live links are. So if you wanna go to that digital playbook that I mentioned right at the start, the link is in right on this page. You can click on it, it'll take you to the right place. That kind of stuff, okay? So, we're wrapped up. Thank you for coming. We're gonna open the floor up to questions and answers. I'll stay as long as you need to. I don't care if I'm here till eight o'clock, it doesn't matter. I may not have all the answers for you. I don't know, it might be a very realistic answer. But uh, start firing your questions out, whatever, whatever you have. Um, I heard a couple, th maybe I'm confused, but the, I heard you say something about one-to-one Mm -hmm. versus hooking up to a cart. Yeah, that, that was that was on how we manage the, <coughs> the iPads, basically. Mm -hmm. Right now, we have a cart-based system <coughs> at the high school. Okay. And very similar, we, have, we call them learning centers, but essentially they're still in the cart-based system at the elementary schools as well. Okay, so ours is coming from middle school, so she's not cart-based. She's right? not cart-based. Okay. They were two years ago. Okay. So when she got the first intro to them two years ago when we started, they were cart-based over there as well. We moved them to the one-to-one, -one, which basically means one device to every student, and then we're shifting the high school now this next year to the one-to-one. -one. So will she be responsible, or the students, will they be responsible for hooking up to the cart to no. download? No. Or, no. What, what they will have is uh, basically they'll have, much like they have this year, you know, they will have the capability to download the apps as needed except for paid stuff. It can only be free stuff that they can download. Okay. And then when we supply them with paid apps that are needed, that teachers request or whatever, those will come through our new system and it basically takes over their iPad, flashes up a big screen that says, this app has been provided by Whitnell School District. You must sign in with your iTunes account, click here to download this <coughs> paid application. And it's basically just delivered to them that much. So, and that is a change from this year. Um, if they had any paid apps, and I don't know exactly what classes she's in, but some, the art class and music classes did some paid apps. Mm -hmm. We have to give codes individually to every student. Mm -hmm. It was a major pain. It yeah. took hours and hours to get sure. done. We won't have to do that next year. Not Great. on wood. Great. Provided everything we're sure. Have yeah. you been having problems with any of the kids that already have these iPads that can download those content from the iTunes store um, with using up all their available memory and then they don't? 
<laughs> and I just know how this goes. <laughs> yep. And generally, it's not downloading stuff. It's pictures and video. Right. It's right. Their, own, their own stuff they're taking. Uh, we had a couple of kids already by the end of September, I think it was, about four weeks into the program. Hey, my iPad says it's full, and I can't download this app my teacher wants me to have for social studies. Yeah. Yeah. So you start um, getting rid of pictures and stuff. But what if other people don't want to do that? Right. You know? Well, the kids know how to do that. We yeah. teach them how to do that and okay. everything. And that was, you know, we pulled some of these kids in that first came to us. And then it became more of a larger issue where we went to the teachers right away and said, hey, you need to remind the kids, you know, 20, 30, 40 photos, we aren't going to care. That's, mm -hmm. We understand that they're going to explore, and some of the exploration is good. 2,000 photos? That's ridiculous. This is still a tool for education. We need to wipe that stuff out. And so I know a few kids came to UCAT and, and she would basically say, you're wiping out your entire photo album, goodbye. Thousands. Mm -hmm. yeah. Thousands of selfies. I mean, there were all pictures of them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, that's, that's what kids do now. Yeah, that's, that's what they, they do. do. Yeah, and they fill up the memory and, and you know, education is priority one. You've got to be able to fit the content and the apps that you need for your classes. You know, whatever is left over, a little bit of that is for your personal. So when you push something over, they'll still, it'll still be there for them to download after they, I, I, I'm unfortunately, I'm the worst one's probably going to be one of those people that's going to fill it up and I'm going to have to say, hey, yeah. get rid of this, because then once they do that, they'll be able to download yeah. what they're supposed to. Yeah. Yes. If it's some, an image or a video they actually want to save, is there a way to actually get that off the iPad? There is. There's a couple of ways. And, and again, this is part of us training in those stations at the beginning of the year. There's primary primarily two ways. In fact, the middle school kids are, are going through this right now, literally this week and next week, because the teachers now have told them and said, hey, we're taking back your iPads at the end of the school year in the last couple days, and then, because we're moving them to the new management system, we didn't think we were going to have to do this, we have to wipe everyone again and start over, unfortunately, because of the new system. And so, there are two places to go, are either Google Drive, and so they can basically, if they've got a bunch of pictures in their photo album, they basically share to you, and Google Drive is an option. So they can put it in the cloud there. Mm -hmm. Or the other one is provided by the e-backpack system that Kat talked about briefly. Oh. Um, which again is if you use Google Drive or Dropbox or any of those cloud-based uh, storage areas, it's like that mm -hmm. with an educational focus slapped over the top of it. Mm -hmm. um, and there's a section there called My Files. And the nice part about My Files is that that doesn't get wiped out from year to year. And so even though it, it's really aimed, I mean, they can put their pictures in there, they can put anything in there that's on the iPad. They can put pages, documents in there, PDFs that teachers have assigned, whatever it is. Um, while their classes get wiped out every summer, we basically do a reset because then they get their new course schedule for the next year. Anything they have in my file stays. And so the hope is that we begin to build digital portfolios with this, especially at the high school level. Middle school kids don't need that so much, but you think if you have any kids that are you know, starting to think about college or upperclassmen right now, and they're getting to that point where they need some exemplar material coming in. My files is a great place to save it. You can organize it by folders. They can even start calling it a portfolio. And they can have work in there that they could then take and display, you know. And the nice part is, by the way, too, eBackpack, we didn't touch on this, it is truly cloud-based. You don't have to be on an iPad to get to it. Oh. So if you have a five-year-old Microsoft Windows computer at home, or a Mac computer, or you have an Android tablet, as long as you have a web browser, you can get to eBack from anywhere. Mm -hmm. And so literally, they could go to a college interview if they needed to and sit down, and if they had material sitting in their eBack pack, they could pull it up on whatever device they have in right there and display that material, which is a nice piece. So those are the ways that they can then save that. And we have unlimited storage space, right, for the students in eBay? Yeah, there's a per file limit of 50 megs, um, but after that, they could have 10,000 files in their eBay that doesn't care. So it's very, very large. So are you saying they'll have the same device through, throughout their... I'm not going to say all the way through. Or? Um, basically, we're, we're thinking a three-year life expectancy on this. This is what the schools that are ahead of us have been experiencing. And so our goal is to continually <coughs> rotate so that every third year we have getting new So if you have a freshman coming in this year, they're not going to make it all the way through high school with that same device. We'll rotate that yet, you know, mm -hmm. um, probably their senior year. Now, at the end of three years, do you guys do that? That's a great question. <laughs> we don't know yet. <laughs> now, if they're still operational, would you be willing to sell them to the kids? Another great question. It's another great question. This is going to be, I don't have an answer for you yet. Um, we, because the question was asked last year by parents, could we buy it outright? You know, get it? 
Because at first, you know, parents were like, well, what if we have one? If you wanted to stay away from what's called bring your own device, because it kind of renders the teacher ineffective in the classroom if we have six different types of devices in there. But the parents said, well, what if you put the package together and tell us what it's worth? Can we go buy it? You know, through the district kind of thing. And then the public account, or the accountants jumped in, the attorneys jumped in and said, you really try to, you know, on some thin ice kind of thing, you could be in trouble because of sales tax and all that kind of stuff. So we veered away from that. So now the question is, we don't know, um, we're going back to study a couple of these districts now that are changing out their equipment for the first time. So in the fall, we're going to visit a couple of people because the other question is, can my child keep it over the summer? I had calls from several middle school families already. My kid is really liking this and it's not for the video games. We are working on math reinforcement with my child at night. We like to keep the device. So the answer is we're taking away, you know, start of the summer, but again, are we gonna sell them? What's gonna happen during the summer months? We're gonna go back to the other districts that are now doing this for the first time this year um, and see what happens to them. Um, so like Milton is letting their kids keep theirs for the first time over the summer. I wanna see what their breakage and loss rate is, you know, Right now, ours is matching theirs. We're at uh, like a 1.2% breakage and loss rate. I can live with that out of 530 iPads. That's very, very low numbers. Does that number also jump to 10% over the summer? We want to see that before we dive into it. Um, so the same thing with the, the sales. Um, they are exploring what they're going to do now because all their first generation iPads are due for renewal. They're changing out a massive amount. I haven't talked to them in the last two months. I don't know what they finally end up doing. Did they get through all the legal hurdles to be able to sell them to parents? Um, a lot of districts are doing reclamation companies that are coming in and buying them back for parts and supplies, and the districts are getting money. That's how they're funding the cycle. We can't continually fund this. I mean, it, the budget's just not gonna bear it. We know that. But if we can either sell the families if they want them, or sell them back to a reclamation company and get 25% back out of our investment three years later, now the, the money starts adding. So you have a good question, but again, kind of unanswered. We're not sure yet. It's a far cry from the slide rule I used when I was in college. Yeah. <laughs> I just want to say I applaud your efforts. I mean, I just retired after 36 years in the business world, and you definitely see it coming. I mean, the trend supported by the gamer study. Yeah, laptops are going away and yeah. business meetings. And Businesses are opening yeah, up yeah, all so this. It's great you're training our kids on how to use this yeah. as a tool. I guess my biggest connection personally, so you know, is I see with water teams, or water ski teams around the area. And we have a lot of college-age students on these water ski teams, and I constantly ask them, you know, what are you doing? What kind of learning systems are you using? You know, and it was great to listen to some of them last summer, you know, that were freshmen and sophomores within the various UW schools, and they had just come back from, from all these UW schools. And it's funny because I don't consider myself that old, but what a generation gap where I still went, and I attended class every day in a classroom, and I physically went there, they're only going to class half the time because half their, their hybrid classes are becoming so common where they're a blended learning, if you're not familiar with this, half of it's online, half of it's still in the traditional classroom kind of thing, and they need that device. The campuses are requiring them. They say, we don't care what it is, but whether it's an iPad or a Chromebook or a laptop or a full phone, something, you're gonna have to have it because you've gotta be able to connect to Be Mobile and a lot of your content <coughs> is being delivered digitally. You're not gonna go sit in front of a professor or lecture all night. And so they need that connection there. And I mean, we're definitely, it's not that we're moving there, we're there already in college. And to hear them talk every day when I go and ask them how they're learning there, it's, you know, it's really interesting to hear what they've shifted to already. Yeah, that was the hardest part. My daughter's freshman, just finished freshman year at Addison. Mm -hmm. Class that they, she didn't meet her group that were presenting the project until the day they presented the project. So they did everything online. And then they went to, and did this yeah. um, in front of that, that was a hard thing to get to figure out how to do once you got there. Yeah, yeah. You know, I have a, I have a good friend. She's been a long, long time, lifetime friend. She is the academic coordinator and counselor <coughs> for the uh, Mount Mary College for their education program. To be going to teaching and everything. And it's funny how few of their classes meet what we would consider a traditional environment anymore. You know, and she said, "Yeah, we require every incoming freshman must have a device that meets their minimum requirements so that they can get all of this online work." Other questions? Is that the Google Calendar going to replace the assignment notebooks at some point? Uh, the sponsor. We are not ordering assignment notebooks, so, okay. so that will be so And there will be, I mean, there is a spot in there where the, where the students can run.
write their own notes mm -hmm. um, to kind of keep track of. Some of our uh, middle school students have found apps that they uh, prefer much better than mm -hmm. Google Calendar to write their own notes, like if there's a mind homework <coughs> one, mm -hmm. and they just, you know, because the teacher puts on there what the homework is, so maybe the child got a good start on it in class, and you know, now they only need to do three problems, so then they'll write some, you know, a little note for themselves mm -hmm. and uh, do that. So yeah, it'll replace the assignment. So, and you mentioned before that um, if you have a Google, we can access the teacher's Google Calendar, Correct. so we can, if we use Google Calendar as a family, Correct. we can sync it in. And even if you don't want to, let's say, um, subscribe to that teacher's calendar, if you just want to maybe just hop in every once in a mm -hmm. while, on their webpage, so you would find that teacher's webpage, and there'll be a link right on there, um, you know, Mrs. Kaiser's math class, and you'll click on that, and it'll show you the whole month at a time then. So if you just want to pop in every once in a while on the website to see what's going on in that class, mm -hmm. you'll be able to do that as well. And understand, like any big initiative and any big rollout, we have staff here that have the same learning curve that any of us would have learning something new. So we have people that are very, very nervous about this and a bit scared. And then we have teachers like Mr. Letty who has embraced it and basically yells at me every time she can't get a cart, you know, because she's jumped ahead of that curve and everything. And so we have that range here. We are making only one requirement of the staff at the high school, the teachers this year, and that is they put all assignments on Google. That is the one requirement because it's a communication piece directly to the students, parents if they want to communicate that way and see that information can certainly grab onto it. That is the one stepping stone we are taking this year. Here's the devices, you have to do this. Mm -hmm. After that, it will be up to the individual teachers to embrace and use what they want. You know, we get questions all the time. Are we moving digital textbooks next year? No, not right away. It's gonna be a multi-year transition. It's not gonna happen overnight. And it, a lot of it's gonna be up to the individual teachers, instructors, and departments what do they feel comfortable with? Are the materials there that are as good as, or hopefully better, than the paper materials to replace them? And until that happens, we're not gonna switch. Mm -hmm. The only benefit is that kids are not gonna be taking pictures of their textbooks instead of carrying the textbook home. You know, if they're using their math textbook. And we have the middle school kids doing this They daily. have problems <laughs> one through 32 out of their math text, they're just gonna take a picture of problems one through 32 and take their iPad home instead of their textbook. Yeah, um, they, they, they wanna take that 10 pound book home. We've been able to get a few of the textbooks we have had um, digital or um, CD-ROM copies that we've been able to get in e -backpack, but so we'll have to work with the teachers and see what we have available at the high school, but they're probably still going to have textbooks, they're still going to have notebooks, they're still going to have pencils, they're still going to, you know, all of those general supplies, they might not need as many, but you know, they'll still need some. And you'll see that change happen, you know, and you, you probably have a fairly full slate of traditional books this year, and then the year after you see a couple disappear, and you know, and then eventually we'll end up Except for AP, more than likely. <laughs> Advanced placement is, the AP is very, very strict on what they allow. We'll see when they change. I would assume they're gonna change eventually too, but you know, we'll see the textbooks slowly disappear over time and go digital. And again, hopefully we end up with a product that's being put out that is the truly interactive textbook. We converted some, and there's basic PDFs, so it was like reading a plain book on there, where it engages the kids more is when you get these great textbooks that come out that are connected with video and audio and animation and so some of the stuff that you saw the teachers making on their own here in the examples, we'd also like to see coming from the publishers too. And when that happens and we're ready, that's when we'll make that switch. Anybody else? Anybody need to get a seat in the auditorium that we're holding? <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much for coming. We're around for a couple minutes. If you got any other individual questions, always thank you so much. Thank you.